Hello and welcome to Herbalist and Herbs. My name is Harry Krasikas. Today's video is short, Medicinal Mushrooms and Cancer Therapy. The profile is Rishi Mushroom. Now Rishi Mushroom has a number of other names. Um, Lingzhi in Chinese, Rishi is the Japanese, and Gandoderma is the Latin name. And this is about Gandoderma lucidum in particular. And that's the one that's usually used medicinally. There, the other varieties also have medicinal value, but this is the one that's usually grown commercially and used in herbal medicine. Now, about 30 years ago, uh, they developed a method of raising it commercially, because previous to that, it was wild harvested. And of course, that's very expensive. So now you can get good quality reishi mushroom for reasonable prices, because they can cultivate it. And they can cultivate it organically also. Now, uh, reishi has a number of applications in the area of helping people with cancer. Now it's got a long history of use in the Chinese pharmacopoeia and it's probably the most studied and most revered herb in the East. Um, its symbology is connected both with wisdom and longevity and it does have a long uh, background and a major amount of information to support a number of things that are stated about it historically. But let's talk about its application specifically in cancer therapy. In, in the East, they think it's rather odd that anyone would apply a therapy as toxic as chemo or radiation and not give people things to strengthen and maintain their bodies throughout these arduous periods. Um, reishi is one of the prime herbs that they use. One of the major problems that you find in chemotherapy is a drop in white and red blood cell count. And if there's a severe enough drop in the white blood cell count, they have to stop the therapy because the body is being left open to infection. When that happens, the cancer has a greater possibility of mutating around the chemo and coming back stronger as a second-line cancer. So in order to prevent this or try to prevent this, Rishi is primary in doing this at maintaining white blood cell count so that you can take the patient through the rounds of chemo that they need to go through and keep them strong and healthy. Now it's got a number of other areas that it works with well in the area of cancer. Um, along with maintaining white, white blood cell counts, it also has the capability of keeping the areas that could be impacted by the chemo strong. One of the major areas in dealing, say, with radiation over the left breast, if a woman has um, breast cancer in her left breast, would be that the radiation would also be going through the heart. Now, often, the chemo drug used with breast cancer is adromycin and also Herceptin. Both of those drugs also impact the heart as well as the radiation. So, from that combination, you can get both short-term damage to the heart and an ultimate culmination of long-term damage that can kill the patient within a number of years. In order to avoid that, you need to be able to give people things during these treatments to keep the heart and protect it and keep it strong. And Rishi plays a key role in that as well. Now, um, along with that, uh, in treating people with uh, cancer, cancer is dependent upon a number of things to continue growing and surviving. And one of those things is growing collateral venous structures. And this process is known as angiogenesis. And that angiogenesis is dependent upon a number of growth factors that are being secreted either by the cancer or by the cancer's manipulation of the body or the immune system. Now, three of those growth factors are affected in a big way by reishi mushroom. So, again, it helps to retard the growth of the cancer, slow it down, and stabilize it. It also has a specific application to breast cancer, and that is um, one of the things that they try to do is prevent the conversion of androgens into estrogen in a woman's body when she's got breast cancer. Uh, because you don't want to raise the estrogen load because it's a stimulant to the breast cancer. And one of the ways you can do that is through the use of what is known as anti-aromatase agents. Now we also have those in the herbal world, and those consist of things like chrysin, green tea, and reishi is an excellent anti-aromatase agent. So in terms of helping that area along and helping to slow the conversion of androgens to estrogens, the use of reishi works well. Um, in terms of prostate cancer, the conversion of testosterone to dehydrotestosterone is a critical thing. And if it goes above a certain amount, 
the dehydrotestosterone begins to act as a proliferant for the prostate cancer. Well, Rishi once again comes in and helps stop that conversion or slow it down and or normalize it of converting testosterone to DHT. Now, Rishi has a number of other applications and in terms of general health and longevity and is known for a number of positive things in the body, including healing the lungs, healing the bronchial tissue, strengthening the heart, strengthening the kidneys, and the liver as well. Um, if you want to read more about this, if you go to my website, herbalistandherbs.com, there is an article on there that matches this video. Please visit it, and thank you for taking the time to see this, this video.